Right guys, in this one I will be making the 9 bike shuttle trailer you see in the background there behind me. But before I get into that, I really wanted to thank all the subscribers that have come to my channel in the last few months. I know 2.5k isn't that much in the big scheme of things, but for me it means heaps. 2.5k is more people that live 20k radius of where I am, so having all of you here in my videos has been just such a buzz. I do want to keep making videos, keep making videos for you guys, so if there's any um, advice or comments or anything like that, please bang them down in this video below. Otherwise, let's get into it. If you own a bike company, you would know the struggles of owning one of these. This one in particular hasn't been the greatest. It's just a little slow to work with. We have to use a lot of straps to keep it in. It looks in theory like it's great, but we're probably on our fifth or sixth iteration of a really good bike trailer. So you can see just here, this is our little, my little prototype of what I'm gonna change this trailer to. But first job is getting all of this cut off. So with this trailer, I'm obviously chopping up an old one that we have already, but you can just use any flatbed trailer to work just as well. You'll see later in the video that I essentially just bang some boards on and make it exactly that, a flatbed trailer. We're not quite 100% sure on what exactly it's gonna work or not, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take this this one, weld it straight onto the back of this, take it for a drive, maybe see what happens before I commit to, you know, putting on the whole thing. This test should give me a good idea of whether the bikes are rubbing or touching or have the potential to jump out and fall off. You can never have enough straps. Next I took it for a good blat boat up and down this real rough country road that I live on making sure to hit every single puddle that I could. Turned out pretty happy with the result, they're not moving around too much so on to the next step. This was a straightforward little step, all I did was put on some little brackets so that I could bolt down the boards in the end to make it that flatbed trailer. Just a straight angle line. 10 mil hole, easy. Next Elena gave it a little paint. This is just hammerite stuff. You just paint it straight over everything. Finishes in a nice gloss, protects from rust. Now you can see the boards on the trailer. They are 18 mil treated ply and I banged them through with some M10 bolts. Oh, washer, mock nut, done. What I've had to do is I've had to get the kind of metal bits in the middle all welded up. I really wanted some solid welds. My little tiny welder couldn't get it just what I wanted. We'll be hopefully finishing that today. Um, on another note, I'm also retrofitting this trailer with a different kind of system. So maybe I'll sneak you a few peeks of that and we can compare which one's better. So these are just 30 mil tubes, they welded onto a flat bar at 330 mil distances apart. In hindsight, instead of the flat bar, next time I'd probably use a square tube or something a little bit more sturdy. So here I'm just chopping up the old trailer, I'm using some of the old bits. I chopped them up, cleaned them up with the angle grinder. I then drilled some holes and fixed them to the bed of the trailer. With this you could probably achieve the same result with some angle line or weld up some bar like I do later for the front wheels but I had this lying around so that's why I used it. So this is a piece that holds the front wheel of the bicycle. The angle is going to vary depending on the types of bikes that you're carrying or how many bikes you got on the trailer. So just play around with this. Here I'm welding bar onto some angle line so that I can fix it down to bed. Next time when I make a trailer like this I'd probably use something a bit more substantial to get that gap a bit higher off the bed. Here the gap's only about 25 mils between the bar and the bed. I'd probably use something to get it about 50 mils would be an optimal gap. So this is just a bit of protection for the pipe and the bikes. It's just the stuff that plumbers use to insulate pipes and covered in a very expensive 
heat shrink that I found on eBay. Um, I'll try to link it in the description below. So I thought before I got any further into this, I'd do a little test strap up with some bikes, take it down to the container and have a chat with Dad to see what he thought. My first concerns here were that the poles themselves were a little bit wobbly and that the back wheel wasn't sitting as tight as I wanted it to be. Okay, so after a good chat with Dad, um, not, not too big a worry. I'm gonna move that over, oh, over. Um, I'm gonna put a little, little bit of strengthening in here, in here, and then we're gonna have dedicated straps on on the trailer itself. Um, so not too big a big a deal, uh, but yeah. So let's get that done. These straps are just bungees cut in half, drilled through the deck and tied on the other side, and then they get pulled over and clipped into an eyelet. I then had my little niece and nephew come around to help me out with welding all these things on. Use it as a bit of a welding lesson for them. They couldn't mess it up too much. Oh, yes, boy, <laughs> yes. Sweet. And that's it. I'm super happy with how this one's turned out. The trailer itself is so light, it straps on real quick, real secure. Bikes don't mess around too much. Uh, first maiden voyage of my trailer, I had probably over 20 grand's worth of bikes on it, and they came off pretty good. So pretty happy, pretty happy with the result. Cool, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I really enjoy building it and I think I got a pretty good bike trailer out of the whole scenario. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.